As a beginner gardener, you may have thought, what should I know about companion planting? Well, this video is to give you some information on that topic right now. So what is companion planting? That's a good question. Companion planting simply means planting many different varieties of plants together in a relatively small space. Why would you do this? For multiple reasons. One of the reasons is pest control. And this is my favorite reason for companion planting. First of all, pests tend to like a specific type of plant. So if you plant a large amount of that one type of plant in a specific area, those pests are going to be more likely to find that plant and eat them all. Not good news for you, good news for those bad insects. So if you intersperse a different varieties of plants together, then it's gonna be more difficult for those pests to find their favorite plant and if you're smart and you plant plants that those pests don't like next to their favorite plant, they might go, ooh, I don't want to eat here. So that's good news for you. Also, if you plant beautiful flowering plants along with your vegetables, you're going to attract pollinators in. They're going to find those beautiful showy flowers first and then go, oh, look, here's some more flowers for me to collect nectar and pollinate so you get more veggies that way. Also, there are particular types of plants that beneficial insects really enjoy. So if you plant a habitat plant for a beneficial insect next to a plant that a bad insect is going to munch on, you can attract those beneficial predator insects into your garden so they will take care of the bad insects for you. Another benefit of companion planting is maximizing your space. You can plant large broadleaf plants next to narrow tall leaf plants and that way they can be closer together but both get the sunlight that they need without competing with each other. Companion planting has been used throughout the ages. One of the most common concepts of companion planting that you may have heard yourself is the three sisters and this was a popular agricultural method used by the Native Americans. They would plant corn, beans, and squash together. They would plant corn because corn is a grass type plant and it grows tall and straight. And then they would plant the beans. The beans have a vine growth habitat and they could use the corn as their support to grow upwards. Plus, beans have an additional benefit as that they can collect nitrogen from the air, one of the few plants that do that, and they collect that into their roots from these little nodules. So if you do the chop and drop method where you trim off the bean plant, it's going to release that nitrogen into the soil, feeding the neighboring plants. Plus squash has a very horizontal growth method. So it's not going to compete with the beans that are climbing your corn. It's not going to compete with the corn, which is raising straight upward. And it's going to cover the extra soil with its large leaves, retaining moisture for all three plants. There's another benefit of companion planting that is slightly more controversial, and that's improving the flavor of your vegetables. Now, some people say that certain companion plants like herbs, for example, may improve the flavor of things like tomatoes. This has been debated as some people say it does, some people say it doesn't. That's not something I really focus on. I focus more on the preventative methods so that way I don't have to add chemicals to my garden. I just plant smartly. Another thing that I do, particularly in the raised garden beds here, is if I have protector plants, and these are the plants that I consider protector plants. Those are the ones that are going to repel the bad insects from my garden. I get those established first before I start seeding my garden with the other vegetables. So my protector plants tend to be onions, garlic, and herbs, and my favorite, marigold. So those I'm going to establish and plan out my garden so that they're kind of in the perimeter or they're centrally located so that way their um, insect repelling scent can permeate the garden and protect those seedlings when they pop up and if they're established then the bad insects have already visited the area and go nope i don't want to eat there so that saves me a lot of time and aggravation but 
the raised garden bed or traditional gardening layout isn't the only place you can implement companion planning. So this is an example of companion planning in a container environment. So our main plant here is our Tabasco pepper. And we really love this guy. We had him originally growing in our raised garden bed and then poof, magically, he sprouted it in a container and we're like, yay, because we thought we'd lost them all together. And that's another thing that's a side note is volunteer plants are your friends. Nurture them. If they find a place that they're happy, let them be happy. So he was doing great until the dreaded white fly appeared. And so I started treating him right away, but I knew if I added some onion plants and some marigold, those both release odors that white flies don't like. So I could plant them in this container along with the Tabasco pepper and make those white flies not want to live here anymore. I love using the onions. These are actually a scallion onion in a container environment because the leaves are just long and narrow so they're not going to compete with the light for the pepper and because they are just a small bulb they're not a large bulbing onion they're not going to compete for the roots as well the marigold however does tend to get a little rambunctious if it gets really happy but because it grows more horizontally than it does vertically i can train it to go over the edge if necessary and the roots Yes, they're going to compete a little bit with the pepper, but the roots of the marigold also secrete um, odors and pheromones and chemicals that root rot nematodes don't like. So marigolds are beneficial above ground and below ground. Here we are in the food forest section of our gardens where we utilize companion planting to its fullest. Not only are we going to pair plants that are beneficial to each other, but we're also going to use the different height layers of the food forest to benefit the plants in different ways. You see, the canopy plants are going to be their tallest trees, and they're going to provide shade for our low-growing, shade-loving plants. That way, we can have a numerous variety of plants in a small area that like many different environments. The one thing that's consistent in this planning that you have to keep in mind is soil types. So you're going to plant, regardless of what light they want, you're going to plant the same soil type loving plants together. So if they like sandy soil, all the sandy soil plants are going to be in your sandy soil area. All the enriched soil plants are going to be together in the enriched soil area and so forth. Over here we have our mulberries that are getting a little sad because it's winter time for them, but I've started to grow pigeon peas next to them and I'm going to use the chop and drop method with them so that their nitrogen nodes will feed my mulberry plants and make them even more happier next season. I have my sisu spinach growing over here and it likes shade so it's in between my marlberry and Brian's cherry tree. So that way it can grow horizontally underneath the shade of both of those trees. This is just some small examples of how companion planting is really benefiting my multitude of plants here in the food forest. If you've enjoyed this video, look up! There might be something else you want to see.